And good evening. We are live inside the state emergency management headquarters as crews have been tracking the progress of Hurricane Florence now for several days. It has been a very busy day here as that storm is rapidly approaching the South Carolina coast. We're going to be talking with leaders here in just a few moments about what's being done to prepare to make sure South Carolinians are safe. But the latest numbers, the 11 o'clock numbers are in on the storm. South Carolina's weatherman, our hurricane expert, is Jim Gandy. He is standing by with an update. Jim, good evening. JR, thank you very much. Uh, this is a time lapse of the radars from uh, Moorhead City and Wilmington over the last five hours. You can see how it's just been kind of drifting and kind of westward, so to speak. Uh, but as it passed by uh, Cape Lookout, they've had winds up to near 100 miles per hour. At Fort Macon, they had wind gusts up to 105 miles per hour. They continue to see occasional gusts in 100. So this is still a powerful hurricane. You can see the center right here and the these, these thunderstorms here, that's part of the eye wall of this storm. It's continuing to drift toward the Wilmington area. And uh, currently, here's what we have. The National Weather Service has added to the advisories. We now have tropical storm watches for Lexington, Richland, Fairfield, Kershaw, and Lancaster County. And now we have tropical storm warning for Orangeburg, Calhoun, uh, for Lee, Sumter, and Clarendon counties off to the west and also we've got uh, a hurricane warning for uh, Ori and Georgetown counties. Now, first of all, this is what we're seeing as far as the track models are concerned. Notice uh, this is where the storm is and, and, and by 7.30 tomorrow night, it's still just beginning to move into South Carolina and it's going to take its time. The track models by 7.30 Saturday evening look like this. It's not until we get into Sunday that it's finally moving on out of the picture and then headed up toward the northeast. Here's the latest enhanced satellite picture. You can see it right here, uh, the center of the storm from earlier, and you can see that this is the track that the National Hurricane Center is projecting. Uh, we do expect it to make landfall near the Wilmington area. And it kind of move along the coast, heading into South Carolina. Could be a little bit to the north, could be a little bit to the south. But generally, it's going to be making its way through the Midlands. Hence, they've kind of added uh, some things here, the watches and the warnings. Notice by 8 p.m. on Saturday, they still think that it might have maximum sustained winds at 45 miles per hour. And that's why they added some of these counties uh, to the watch and warning area. Our computer model showing the system coming in. And it will continue to kind of make its way across South Carolina. Now, we added the computer model to it to give you an idea of the rain and when it's coming in. It'll start coming in uh, Friday night, but most of that rain that we're going to be seeing is going to be coming uh, Saturday into Sunday morning. As far as winds are concerned, Here's what our computer model is projecting as it begins to fill in with some of the numbers. Uh, obviously, most of the winds will start coming in a little bit later. Uh, apparently, our computer model having a little bit of problem, so there we go. We're starting to see some of the wind gusts. Uh, some of the wind gusts by uh, Friday evening, you can see they're getting up to tropical storm force. And as we go forward into time, well, we're going to have a chance of seeing some winds gusting up to about 50, 55 miles per hour in the eastern part of the Midlands and just about 45 miles per hour here in the central part of the Midlands. Rainfall may be the bigger issue. Uh, while we're going to see strong enough winds to create some power outages due to some falling trees, Rainfall is going to be a problem, particularly in the northeastern part of our state with over 20 inches of rain. You get to Florence, over 15 inches of rain. It, you get to Bishopville, you're going to have over 10 inches of rain. For Sumter, it'll be 7 to 10 inches of rain. Here in the Columbia area, we're expecting across uh, the Columbia area, 3 to 6 inches of rain. You get down toward Orangeburg, though, it'll be about 2 to maybe 3 inches of rain. So definitely. The heaviest rains are going to be right in this area. Once you get to the Savannah River, you're probably looking at less than an inch of rain. Now, some of this rain will be heavy enough to create some flash floods, and as a result, a flash flood watch is in effect for all of the Midlands. But look at this heavy rain across uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, the northern sections all the way to the mountains. This means that all the rivers will have a flood threat that flood threat may persist long after the storm leaves. So next week, we'll be looking at the potential of river flooding as that water comes down the rivers from North Carolina into South Carolina. JR? 
Jim, let me ask you real quick about the possibility of tornadic activity as a result of this system. Are there any areas of the state that need to be on the lookout more than others? Probably so. Uh, there is a slight chance that there could be, a, let's say, an isolated tornado. And that would be north of I-20, east of I-77. So basically the northeastern part of our state but the chance is quite low, and quite frankly, I really don't think that we're going to see much in the way of tornadoes. That is going to be mainly over in eastern North Carolina. All right, South Carolina's weatherman Jim Gandy, thank you so much.